This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. It's time for Overrated, Underrated with Ryder and Lisa. Underrated, not having a zit on your lip. Oh my God, it's so painful and ugly. I feel like I've done this before. It was probably like six months ago when I had a zit on my lip. We could do the top seven at seven today with painful places for zits. We should. Because the lip would be on there. It would definitely be on there. I don't think it would be number one. No. But Inside it would be... of the nose would probably. Ooh, maybe. <laughs> trying to think of some other ones that would be even more painful. What do you think uh, it's from? Like, just by chance or? Chocolate. Yeah. And like, is it that the, you ended up with some chocolate on your lip? No, I think it's what? just like, <laughs> it's seeping out of my pores. Okay, got it. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Overrated, underrated. I'm going with underrated having auto start in your car. Mm, yes. It. Uh, I don't have that. And man, <laughs> is it ever cold. Like the drive to work, I'm in a winter jacket this morning and I'm like, nope, still not warm. And then my car finally warms up by the time I get here. I need to get back into the mentality that the heat should be cranked when I get out of my yeah, car it's in a the bad afternoon. Time of year for that, you forget about that. I always forget, and then I'll start my car in the mornings, and then when I get in, I'm like, oh, so just nothing was happening in here. It's <laughs> so cold. But also, my vehicle has this weird setting, and I don't know how to fix it. Where I'll start my car, and if I'm not in the vehicle within 15 minutes, it turns off the car, but it also blows the loudest horn I've ever heard, and. When my car is getting started at 4.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and that horn blows, everybody hates me in the neighborhood. I don't know how to turn it off. So every day starts with panic for me because I'm like, I got to get in the car before the right the alarm goes off. But you also want to give it enough time that you get there when it's warm. So you want to hit it at like 14 minutes. I know. It's, yeah. it's a tough <laughs> life. You should. I bet you could change that pretty easily. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I, like, I wouldn't be able to. My but. car starter has one button on it. It's You hold it down and it starts the car. Right. And then you double click it to unlock the door. I'm like, I don't know how to turn off this alarm at all. With that said, still an underrated feature. Yeah, no, I'll take it over your <laughs> freezing cold car. <laughs> There's a pair of nonprofits that are housing homeless people in these tiny, cute, sustainable homes in people's backyards. This started in Seattle. There was a man who worked for an architect company and he befriended a homeless person outside. And that's where he kind of got this idea to start something called the Block Project. Seattle has some of the most expensive real estate and it's the third largest homeless community in their country. So he founded Block. So he would create these little homes and then they would help have the government step in to make the process legally possible. Mm -hmm. So there are now thousands of people that have allowed homeless people to move into their backyards where they Whoa. would build these cute little homes. Not only that, they get a welcome to the neighborhood gift bag with pots, pans, shampoo, towels, bed linens, and more. Incredible. Yeah. Tell me something good. Uh, my story is about some lifeboat volunteers that were at one of their members' weddings uh, just off the coast in England. When right after the wedding, they were outside taking some pictures. They all got notified that uh, somebody was in a rough situation on the water. So they all just booted her out there. Seven minutes later, they made the rescue. That's how close they were to where the incident shook down. Whoa. And they were all like in their gear because they were on call anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they managed to uh, get over there and save the um, paddle boarding family from some rough water in seven minutes after they were at their buddy's wedding. You know, it's crazy to think, yesterday I was at the grocery store and there were a couple of firefighters in the store and they must have gotten a call because they dropped their groceries and booted out really? and got into their big firefighter truck and took off with the rest of their crew that was waiting in the vehicle. So that must be why. They probably bring the full truck out, two people go into the store, and they. Oh, that's why they always bring the fire truck. Mm -hmm. Because if they get a call... Yeah, they gotta go. They, so were they just go. picking up snacks? Did you creep what food they left behind? No, I didn't see, but I think they <laughs> do pick up um, food to take back to their hall, because right. they always cook for each other. But it was just so cool to see it firsthand, to be like, whoa, they gotta be somewhere now. Yeah, well, and these guys did exactly that and managed to save the day. Mm -hmm. Tell me something good.
<laughs> so we just announced that we have a Tis the Sizz Radwater Seltzer available. So Town Square Brewing is where you can pick it up. 10% of those sales are going to Edmonton Food Bank. And there's a lot of local liquor stores that are also carrying them. You can find that list, play107.com slash Tis the Sizz, or you can check our social media. We've written it on Instagram. Tis the Sizz is a movement, though, and we want to know what you're doing lately that you can just slough off as well. Tis the Sizz, way she goes. Um so many good texts rolling in. Jess wrote in saying, I'm not shaving my legs because tis the sizz. And it's true. It's getting cold out. You're not showing your legs. You don't need to shave. Brenna wrote in saying, I'm picking up a stray kitten in my car rental because tis the sizz. <laughs> yes. Love that one. Absolutely. Well done. Well done. Um, this one here, we didn't get a name yet. Uh, maybe they don't want to give a name because they are talking about work. It says, strolling into work 25 minutes later than planned. My boss is on vacay. Tis the sizz. That is so good. What's up? Oh, we're just picking up some breakfast to go before we head out shopping for the day. Tis the sizz, right? It (laughs) is the sizz, exactly. (laughs) So you guys uh, just like decided not to go to work today or what? Well, you know, one of the perks from working from home is you can scoot out a little bit uh, (laughs) early before the day starts and send in that quick email that, oh, you know, just not feeling too great today. (laughs) Awesome. And like with the stores on a Tuesday morning in November, I bet you'll be able to get a lot of your shopping done. Well, and that's kind of the idea, right? No sense waiting for Black Friday whenever that rolls around. Might as well get it done now, hey? Tis the sizz. Well, and also, you think you're going out to buy gifts for other people, but you'll end up just buying stuff for yourself because tis the sizz. Well, and that's the thing. We've got to look for some of those uh, new brews, hey? So we'll be hitting the liquor store, too. Tis the sizz. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Have you ever seen a dog tilt its head when it's, like, thinking? Yeah. Or confused? It's usually after you say something to them. It's actually a sign of intelligence in dogs. Some dogs tilt their heads when they're confused and thinking. Others don't. And the ones that do are actually scientifically smarter. Research has been done. That does make sense. Like now that I'm thinking back to dogs that have tilted their heads at me, usually more trained than other dogs. And most dogs that you see in movies, there are several scenes where they tilt their heads. Those are established dog actors. Yeah, and like... I'm thinking about it now, and actually when I read this, I was like, kind of got <laughs> a little bit grumpy or like jealous of, of the smart dogs, because my dog doesn't tilt his head very much. Unless his ear's itchy. Yeah, that is like tilting it both <laughs> ways back and forth. Aww. But does this mean I have kind of a slow, slow dog? He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's caring. He's so gentle. Yeah, but is he a little bit dumb? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. He even ate the stairs, so I guess I should have known at that point. Brand new episode of Unsung Heroes, where we give shout-outs to people, places, and things that don't always get the love and adoration they deserve. Let me be your hero. Shout-out to Betty White trending today. Can we stop doing this? Every time she trends, I have a heart attack, thinking that she might have had a heart attack. No more, unless it's her birthday or she's dating Pete Davidson. Quit making her trend for no reason. I've heard rumors. (laughs) They were holding hands. No. Shout out to dentists trying to get kids to turn in their Halloween candy for toothbrushes. (laughs) Is that a thing? Yeah. It's like trying to get a Edmonton sports fan to trade in free oiler tickets for a car accident or something they really don't want. I mean, I would bring the candy that I don't care for. Those coffee toffee kind of and things. Get, and get a toothbrush for that? Yeah, no, kids would rather eat the candy. Yeah, you're right. I would probably. Shout out to people who already have their Christmas tree up. You terrify me. I don't know what it is, but it's a bit much. Already? Okay. Shout out to that one friend we all have that we can respond to in text a week after they ask you a question on text, <laughs> knowing that they'll get back to you and say thank you a week later. <laughs> Few and far between. Yeah, but that's a good relationship. Shout out to today being National Deviled Egg Day. Yes. No one looks attractive eating a regurgitated cream-filled egg. No one. Not even Megan Fox. You can't change my mind. That's disgusting. Have you ever watched someone eat a deviled egg at like a potluck? Ugh. How it just kind of slips in as they're succulating it. And they're just like chewing on it and still talking to you, asking you how your life's been. And you're like, ugh, I've been better. Damn, I could go for a deviled egg right now. <laughs>
top five appetizers. No. Yeah. I don't think so. Shout out to boating being the number one hobby that adds to men's attractiveness. If you don't have a boat like me, don't worry. In the winter, they're just as ugly as the rest of us. <laughs> Shout out to stores that are pulling Halloween candy off the shelves at midnight after Halloween. Why must you steal discounted joy from us? Who's getting that? The employees at this store? I need to pick up a couple shifts. <laughs> And finally, shout out to my mom for calling me once a week to let me know who died that I kind of know. Mm, that's nice. Thanks, Mom. Jessica Simpson shared a memory on Facebook, and I uh, got to give her full respect for sharing a memory that maybe wasn't easy to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, she had obviously partied pretty hard on Halloween night, woke up November 1st of 2017 and decided that was it for her. She was going to give up drinking and face her alcoholism head on. Yeah, it was a very powerful post on social media. It's on her Facebook page, on her Instagram. And if I'm not mistaken, she had a, a memoir come out recently, right? Uh, I know that there is a memoir, like a, a an autobiography out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I've heard amazing things. And she actually voices it if you get it on audiobook. And even if you're not a huge Jessica Simpson fan, apparently she's extremely raw, vulnerable, funny, gives a lot of insight uh, into Hollywood, talks about John Mayer and how terrible he was to her. I'm just so intrigued. I want to know more. So in this post, she wrote, it is a picture of her. We shared it on Play 107's Facebook page if you want to go check it out. This person in the early morning of November 1st, 2017 is an unrecognizable version of myself. I had so much self-discovery to unlock and explore. I knew in this very moment I would allow myself to take back my light, show victory over my internal battle of self-respect, and brave this world with piercing clarity. Personally, to do this, I needed to stop drinking alcohol because it kept my mind and heart circling in the same direction. And quite honestly, I was exhausted. I wanted to feel the pain so I could carry it like a badge of honor. I wanted to live as a leader does and break cycles to advance forward, never looking back with regret and remorse over any choice I have made and would make for the rest of my time here within this beautiful world. How true is that? Mm -hmm. every, yeah. de every decision you Powerful. make if, if you're sober is the one you made because you wanted to in that moment. I just think that's a really interesting way to put it. She says, I can't believe it's been four years. It feels like maybe two, but I think that's a good thing. And also COVID. Like, it does seem like the past two years have been one year combined. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Crazy to think. So if you have been going through something or maybe trying to achieve something in your life, um, like Ryder, you quit smoking at the beginning of the pandemic. And it must seem like that was yesterday that you quit. Yeah, it's coming up on, what, two years almost, right? Year Over a year and a half. Yeah, I just decided that if there was this virus that was attacking people's lungs, I may want mine to be healthy and ready to fight it if it happens. And I'm I'm very thankful that I had that bolt of clarity and I've been able to to trust myself and, and uh, continue being a non-smoker. But good for Jessica Simpson. Yeah, and I think this part will really resonate with people. So please listen up. It says there's so much stigma around the word alcoholism or the label of an alcoholic. The real work that needed to be done in my life was to actually accept failure, pain, brokenness, and self-sabotage. The drinking wasn't the issue. I was. I didn't love myself. I didn't respect my own power. Today, I do. I have made nice with the fears, and I have accepted the parts of my life that are just sad. I own my personal power with soulful courage. I am wildly honest and comfortably open. I am free. Wow. If uh, her book is anything like that post, just in the way she's wording things, I may have to give that a, a go, a, mm -hmm. a read or a listen. I really like it when authors read their own, especially if it's an autobiography style yep. book. I love it when they read their own. Maybe uh, next month for your Lisa's Ladies Book Club, you yeah. should do Jessica Simpson. Yeah, if you want to join my book club, feel free to give me a follow, Lisa's Ladies YG on Instagram or on Facebook as well. Let's play 107. Good morning. Man, this is crazy. Will Ferrell turned down Elf 2 for now. He said the script wasn't where he wanted it to be. He said it was bad in his opinion. Mm. $29 million was on the table that Whoa. he walked away from because he didn't like the script. I've got a lot of respect for that. I'd say. Because they're back to the drawing board is my guess, rewriting the script, and he'll probably make just as much, if not more, with a better script. He's not going to be in something if it's bad. 
Well, you look back at his track record, yeah, and like every movie he's in, if you're in the right mood going in, terrific. Yeah. Hilarious. So I, I trust his opinion, but $29 million, <laughs> like that's insane. So I wanted to ask if you've ever turned down something that you regret. <sighs> no, because I like saying no to things. Like Big Brother called me f- oh, to yeah. be on it, and I, I ghosted them. Because you were just anxious? I just didn't want anything to do with it. I, At first I did. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, I don't want this. I can't do this. See, yeah, I would have. if I would have turned down Big Brother, I would have been real sad about it. I just have a terrible memory. And there's a, like the way to win the game. You got to remember things. And like I would just look like an idiot. Also, you have to do things that like hold on to this for a very long time. I could see you being like, no. Yeah. I'd, <laughs> no, t- thank you. Yeah, I'd be like, I think I'm going to sit this one out. And they'd be like, this isn't how the game works. <laughs> yeah, like you're eliminated <laughs> if you do that. Like, well, I said what I said. <laughs> you turned down one thing that I'm still angry at you about. There was an oiler that was trying to court you. Oh, yeah. And even invited you to a Halloween party and said, like, bring Ryder. Like, I could have been best friends with McDavid right now. You can't hang out with McDavid. That'd be weird. You're 38. You're 39. Aren't you 39 now? Yeah. So? He can have, like, an older buddy. Uh, I've got an he older doesn't buddy. Want, no, he doesn't want you around. Because you would no. lower his swag factor. Absolutely not. I'd make him look way hotter, and people would be like, whoa, he... <laughs> McDavid rolls with Ryer. <laughs> Nobody maybe, would say well, that. Well, <laughs> maybe. I mean, it would be pretty cool if you were a fan of the show and a big Oilers fan and you saw the two of you out somewhere. That would be pretty cool. Just holding hands, walking down the street. Ugh. Yeah, I didn't tell Ryder about the Halloween party until the next day, and he was so mad at me. I kicked the garbage can. Yeah. yeah. He's like, what do you mean we were invited to a Halloween party? I was like, yeah, they, they invited me. I just wasn't interested in going. I don't think you talked to me for two days. No. Until we were like, like he would talk to me when we were on air because we were doing the show together. But out, when music was playing, Just. he turned his chair the other way. Yeah, the worst. Uh, so we want to know from you, have you ever turned down something that you regret? I love that Lisa turned down something that I regret <laughs> is my best example. Yeah, why is it. this all about me? What? It's like just me telling stories of things I've shut down. I say yes to everything. I know you do. So I don't have an answer This for guy's this. desperate to hang out with people and do things. So. No, we don't use the D word. <laughs> Susan wrote in saying, one time my boyfriend asked me if I wanted anything from McDonald's. I said no. I still think about those potential nuggets. This seems like one of those situations where you got in a fight and they try and make it up to you by bringing you food, which usually works. But if you're stubborn enough, you go, no, I don't want anything. But you do. (laughs) Big time. You you always do. do. Um, Amy texted in saying the thing that I regret is saying no to smoking a joint with Ice Cube when he came to the city. It was either 2004 or 03. I'm not sure. I was at the bar, but. I can't even remember what bar it was because they've changed the name of it so many times. Rum or Empire or something. One of the bars that was at West Edmonton Mall. I wish cell phones were more of a thing back then. I definitely would have gotten a lot of pictures with him. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, 780-784-7107. We have Dan on the phone, our listener who looks almost exactly like Will Ferrell. And it's funny because that's why we started talking about this. Will Ferrell turned down Elf 2 for $29 million. And I just feel like that much money on the table, you're going to regret it. Uh, You got a story about Will Ferrell, too? Fire away. I was in Hawaii in 2007 in the fall. I was staying at the Ilikai, and next door at the Hawaiian Hilton Village, Will Ferrell was there. And at that time, we didn't have smartphones like we do now. And um, I didn't have a laptop. So if I wanted to use a computer, I had to go to the Hawaiian Hilton Village because they didn't have any internet service at our hotel that I stayed at. Front desk clerk that saw me all the time said, you really got to come back here like Thursday night. And I'm thinking, I can't. Like, I'm in class. And uh, they're like, you got to come back. You're going to regret it. And she was right because that night they were having a Will Ferrell lookalike contest and I missed it. Oh, you would have won. Yeah, totally. So, like, everyone would have thought that you were there for the contest, though, for right? sure. Yeah, and when I was out, like, that week that Will Ferrell was there, everybody would, like, stare through me. And so one time I was out, and I was eating a hot dog because we were going on some trip, and um, this woman's staring at me. I'm like, hey, 
And she's like looking through me. I'm like, hey, I'm talking to you. She's like, what? And I said, have you never seen anybody eat a hot dog before? And I walked away. And she's probably thinking, that Will Ferrell, what a jack. <laughs> Play 107. Ryder and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.